Welcome to another lecture of Python and Matrices course. In this lecture, we will be talking about singular value decomposition and principal component analysis. In short, singular value decomposition is known as SVD and principal component analysis is known as PCA. Both of these techniques are primarily belonging to what is known as dimensionality reduction techniques and dimensionality reduction is a very very important process or a step in many different application including machine learning for sure. And what we are doing when we are talking about dimensionality reduction is essentially we are reducing the number of variables under consideration by doing by obtaining some such sort of principal variables. So let's me give you a brief intuition a geometrical intuition what dimensionality reduction might look like. Let's say if we have data that we are representing in a three dimension, right? So if we have a three dimensional data uh, plane and we are representing data in three dimensions, so let's say we have some data points which are in this dimensions, right? Let's say these are the four data points that there are in these dimensions. And again, this is the first dimension, this is the second dimension, and this is the third dimension. Then what we are doing is we are taking this data set and hopefully presenting that data set in a lower dimension, maybe for example, in just two dimension, okay? So we are doing some transformation of this data and we are projecting that into a lower dimension, maybe from a three dimensional to a two dimensional space. And what we want to hope to achieve in this dimensional space is, you know, we uh, try to get projected points, projected location of the data points in the previous space in the new space. So what we have done is by doing this projection, we have essentially reduced the number of variables or number of features that is needed to represent this data. The number of features in this space is three, whereas in the example that I'm giving you, the number of features uh, to represent the data is two in this case. So here we are reducing the number of dimensions to represent the data itself, and that essentially is the key crux of dimensionality reduction. Now, why we want to do dimensionality reduction, okay? So now there are problems with typically high dimensional data sets, okay? And the first problem with the high dimensional data set is the learning or if your computations that you're doing with a data set could be expensive because the data itself is in a high dimensional state. And why? Let's say many of the machine learning frameworks requires you to do matrix inversion or use a computational approach such as optimization to solve for a problem. And any problem which is a high dimensional, uh, the matrix inversion becomes complex and expensive. And same it is true for optimization based approach. If the number of variables in the optimization problem increase, then the problem, be problem becomes, optimization problem becomes a little bit more tougher to solve, right? And this is a curse of dimensionality and typically learning is expensive in the higher dimensional space. So what you may want to do is maybe you can represent the data in a lower dimensional space and solve that problem, whatever you are interested in matrix inversion or optimization in this dimensional space rather than in the higher dimensional space that you have. That's one. The second issue is if you have a high dimensional data, right, and the number of features typically are higher, and if you fit a machine learning model, it might lead to what is known as overfitting. So overfitting is a problem which happens when you have trained a machine learning model which does really well in case of the training data. So it fits the training data really, really well. But when you start using that learned model in actual practice for new data or the testing data, it does not work well. And this could be an overfitting issue where the performance of the model is really great with the trained data, but the performance of the model is not that great in the testing on the real case scenario, user scenario. And this problem is known as overfitting. And when you have a high dimensional data set or features which has high numbers of dimension, then if you're fitting a model, it might lead to overfitting. So reducing the number of features or number of dimension and fitting a model in a row dimensional space might also lead to models which does not overfit and which are good models to use in practice. So that's another advantage of dimensionality reduction. Okay. Now, the data are highly correlated in high dimensions, okay? And this is a high possibility that, you know, if you have a high number of data, data might be correlated. 
and you can decorrelate by doing this dimensionality reduction and this is something that I will also allude when we are talking about the PCA which is the one of the main ways to do the dimensionality reduction. So we will come back to this highly correlated issue a little bit later in the lecture and we'll see what we mean. Okay. Finally, you know, the distance between a nearest and farthest data points can become equidistance in a higher dimensional space. And here is an example. For example, in a higher dimensional space that we have here, if you take the distance between all the four points, those four points are equidistance, okay, a nearly same distance, right? Whereas if we do the dimensionality reduction, and then again, this is a class one, one type of data set, this is class two data set. When you do this dimensionality reduction in the reduced phase, the distances are now changing and they are no longer equidistance, right? So distances between similar data points are smaller and the distances between, you know, dissimilar data points are, you know, larger. So this is another issue that happens that, you know, in case of high dimensional space, you might have distances between all the data points being equidistance and that might lead to problem. And what is the problem? It might be lead to, for example, the data would be easier to classify. So if I want to draw a plane, right, to classify this data set where the, this is class one and this is class two, right, it is easier to classify that data in the lower dimensional space. Whereas it will be a little bit hard to, you know, find out the plane uh, in this high dimensional space, right? So this is the fourth issue that typically the distances between the nearest and farthest data point could be equidistance in high dimensional space. Whereas when you do the projection and bring that data set in a lower dimensional space, the distance, you know, are no longer equidistance. And this helps us in easier classification or easier model fitting and so on. And that's one of the reasons why you may be interested in doing dimensional.